Monica Andrews, ESPN. For both of you guys, I'm curious, you guys have talked a lot about how at this point, you know, sometimes it takes experience. I'm wondering if now that you have some of that experience, if you see more validity to that point. Or... Oh, yeah. If you guys have been following this channel for quite some time, you'd know that I usually do my best not to commentate on the politics that involve other analysts because this is a basketball channel. And sometimes, yes, we do kind of step outside of those lines. I feel like in this instance, mainstream media really botched the Ime Yudoka situation. I feel like it's mainstream media's job to give the viewer an unbiased view of both sides of the situation. And I feel like in this one particular instance, at least one particular analysts has not been unbiased. It's very clear that her entire judgment and her whole perception of the situation has been tainted for one particular reason. We're going to get to everything in this video. Before we get to the content, we're still running NBA 2K23 giveaways, primarily because I don't have a lot of people to play NBA 2K23 with. So all you have to do is follow me on Twitter or Instagram. We're going to be dropping codes throughout the next couple of days, or we're just going to be picking various giveaway winners, whichever you guys prefer. Now that we Get all that out of the way. Cue the intro. Mike check one two one two. What's going on, everybody? Man, we are on a crazy upload streak ever since this comment was dropped on one of my videos. A huge shout out to the playmaker for the motivation because I actually took this comment personally. So we need to start this video with a bit of a disclaimer. It's very important to note that the Ime Yudoka situation is significantly more darker than any of us ever expected. And the Boston Celtics, for the most part, have been doing whatever they possibly could to cover up the details of this situation, mainly because they may not want to sabotage the career of Ime Yudoka, and they don't want to compromise the identity of the woman involved. All we know so far is the woman involved is a top executive, which led to a lot of people on Twitter thinking it's one particular person, allegedly, but for the most part, the Celtics have been doing whatever they possibly could to hide the nature of Ime Yudoka's crimes and also not compromise her identity. Matt Barnes initially took Ime Yudoka's side, citing that he thinks it's unfair that Ime Yudoka suspended an entire season for a consensual relationship. Once he found out the details of the situation, he gave us this video. And I clearly have to say last night, uh, without knowing all the facts, I spoke on Ime Yudoka's defense. And after finding out the facts after I spoke, I erased what I posted because this situation in Boston is deep, it's messy, it's a hundred times uglier than any of us thought after I posted it. I got a call from someone who had all the details and it's just deep. So, man, praying for everybody involved. Um, you know, hope everyone gets through this. So this prompted Matt Barnes to do a complete 180. And now, after realizing the nature of the situation, he went a step further. He suggested that Ime Yudoka will be lucky to ever coach in the NBA again, given how serious the situation is. So again, the Boston Celtics are trying to be as discreet as possible about the situation. If you remember, the very first time Adrian Wojnarowski even tweeted about the Ime Yudoka situation, he was very vague himself. This is woke the guy that is the king of going into circles, figuring out what's wrong, getting any possible leaked information and bringing it to our attention. And even Adrian Wojnarowski wasn't able to figure out initially, it took him like another six hours, why Ime Yudoka might potentially be suspended for a whole season. The point being that the Boston Celtics were trying to be as discreet as possible about the situation. But whenever the coach of the Eastern Conference champions gets suspended, obviously he has ESPN's going to pick up that story and talk about it. It's a pretty big story. So of course, if ESPN's picking it up and talking about it, Stephen A. Smith is going to talk about it on first take. And I'm sure a lot of you guys may have seen this clip. The main reason I'm making this video isn't even because of this clip. It's because of the clips later on in the video that actually drive me insane. So just to give you some background for those of you guys that didn't see the clip, here's how it starts out. It said, in the numerous news reports, it was a consensual relationship that violated organizational policy. So only he is in violation of the company policy. 
the woman who elected to have a consensual relationship with him is not in violation. He gets to get mentioned and put on front street. We don't know who she is. What about the other women within the Celtics organization who have been victimized because wrong assumptions have been made by their involvement? If you knew exactly who it was, that would alleviate the concerns of all the other women who have had their names paraded out into the streets. What about them? Stephen A. Smith makes multiple valid points in this take of his. And to be honest, he doesn't always nail these types of takes, but in this particular instance, he's right. Only Ime Yudoka is getting his name dragged through the mud. You're not even hearing who the woman who he is involved with is. And to be honest, I could understand why the Celtics did that. I mean, if you look at women in this type of situations in the past, I mean, whether it's Monica Lewinsky, or if you want to go into football, we've covered the Brett Favre situation on my NFL channel microphone. Brett Favre a while ago texted a picture of his Johnson to a reporter by the name of Jen Sturger. And at the end of the day, it was Jen Sturger whose reputation took a gigantic hit just from being a victim of this situation. I mean, to this day, she's referred to as the Brett Favre girl. She was so tormented by the situation that she even got her breast implants removed. And she said that was as a direct result of the Brett Favre situation situation. So I could understand keeping the woman's identity a secret for that reason. And I guess that's the one part that Stephen A. Smith doesn't really acknowledge what ends up happening to these women. But at the same time, he makes a very valid point. There's been many women in the Boston Celtics front office and many female executives that were wrongly accused of participating in this with Ime Yudoka. There's one other issue in this situation that I don't think Stephen A. Smith also takes into account. And that's the fact that he is taking the Boston Celtics report and this news at face value. I'm starting to get the feeling that there are specific details of the story that may have been fabricated in order to preserve Ime Yudoka's reputation. This is a crazy accusation. I could be wrong here. Based upon what's going on, I think there's something more sinister that occurred than a consensual relationship. And I think that's something that Stephen A. Smith doesn't acknowledge here. But Malika Andrews' response didn't include anything that I'm saying here. As a matter of fact, it was probably the worst way she could have handled this. This is how she reacted. Stephen A, with all due respect, this is not about pointing the finger. Stop. What, what became apparent to me in this press conference is that we do not have all of the information here. And it was frustrating to me that the Celtics declined to elaborate or to give more specifics about what exactly the rule breaking was that led us to this point. What completely ruins everything for Malika Andrews is the twist she adds at the very end of her take right here. We are not here, Stephen A, to further blame women. That is not why we are here. So Malika pretty much gaslighted Stephen A. Smith saying, stop blaming women for being the victim here. Bear in mind, we don't know the full story. Stephen A. is asking a very simple question. Why is the man getting punished? Why isn't the woman being punished? What is going on? It's a fair question to ask, but I feel like Malika took this one fair question and completely stretched it into something it shouldn't have been. And this is just incident number one. Stephen A. Smith gets really upset at her for this and rightfully so this is his reaction i don't appreciate where you're going with that i'm not blaming anybody but Ime Yudoka. he deserves the fact of the matter is i've said he deserved to be fired if they were going to fire him if you're not going to fire him then don't fire him my issue is all of this being publicized i listen to you you're the one telling me to stop on my show it ain't happening Okay, that's number one. Number two, I've already said he deserves to be fired or he deserves what to, to be there and handle it internally and privately. So on NBA Today, Kendrick Perkins respectfully is pretty much saying a very similar thing as what Stephen A. Smith is saying. I didn't like Brad comments on this. And let me explain why. Not the, the fact that he was taken up and protecting the women in the organization, but... You know, he said about the speculations and the, and the Twitter BS and things to that nature and how unfair it was to the women in the organization that is not involved with this particular situation. 
And I get that, right? But why is it speculations? It's speculations because of the reports that were put out by the actual Boston Celtics. So they didn't do a great job from the jump of actually protecting the women in their organization. Let me know if you think there's anything wrong with this thing that Kendrick Perkins says. Yes, Ime Udoka was wrong. We get that. His punishment, he deserved that, and whatever else follows, I hate it for him, but he put himself in this position. But why are the other people getting left off the hook? Well, That's the Kendrick, problem that I have Kendrick, right now. Kendrick, Everybody got to be held Kendrick. accountable. I think that we need to circle back to what Shanae said, is that there was a investigation that was conducted by an independent law firm here. And without, I think that transparency is what will rule the day here. And so without having all of the information, it is unfair and irresponsible of us to go and to speculate on that. The thing that drives me crazy here is Malika Andrews doesn't even let the man finish. This is a debate show. NBA Today, kind of a debate show. First take is 100% a debate show. Cutting people off as they're making their point is so disrespectful and just shows that you're completely incapable of hearing out the other side's argument. If multiple people are making the same argument against you, even though you think you're the one that's 100% right, it's your job to at least hear them out. And I don't think what Kendrick Perkins is saying is bad at all. If you want to view women as equivalents in this situation, if you want to view women as the same way as you're perceiving men, you can't look at them as victims right now. I mean, it's a consensual relationship. Both sides had something to do with this relationship going down. If you have a feminist perspective of society, that's especially true. But again, we don't know all the details. Something more sinister could be going on. But the way Malika has been handling this has been horrific. So far up until this point, you may have known all this information. This last clip is what set me off because the Boston Celtics did what was necessary. To be honest, I think Ime Yudoka was overpunished. Based off of what we know and assuming it's a consensual relationship between two parties and nothing worse is going on, I think a one year suspension is way too much. I mean, if you want to quantified in NBA terms, that's how long Robert Sarver was potentially going to be suspended for saying the N word a couple of times in 2004 and in 2016 and saying pregnant women won't be capable of doing their job after giving childbirth. But you also have to understand on top of being an NBA commentator, I'm an NFL commentator. And in the past year, I covered the Deshaun Watson case and I covered the Matt Areza case, both different players. And a lot of people have been bringing race into this. So both different races. One is a white punter. One is a black superstar QB. One gets accused of 23 sexual assaults. One has a little bit worse evidence out on him for something way more sinister that I don't even want to say on this channel. So I'll leave a video to it at the end screen. And this is what the video looks like. And in both of those situations, Matt Areza lost his opportunity to play football. Deshaun Watson was suspended for 12 games. And so personally, whenever I compare that situation to this situation, a consensual relationship within the workplace, I do think Ime Udoka was overpunished if this is all that's going on. If there isn't something worse, which I have an inkling that there's something worse happening. Here's the messed up part. Despite the Boston Celtics really taking action, which again, to their credit, it's overaction if you ask me, but if they deem it necessary, then I respect that. Malika Andrews, for some reason, felt like it was necessary to bring up the criminal history of their interim head coach, Joe Missoula. Be remiss not to also mention that Missoula was arrested twice at West Virginia, once in 2008 for underage drinking and aggravated assault. He pled guilty, paid a fine, and then again in 2009 for domestic battery after an incident at Morgantown Bar. The domestic battery case never went to trial. It was settled in August of 2009. He paid a $100 fine and court costs, plus had to do 40 hours of community service. Now, that was 13 years ago. He settled and paid both fines. So, Woj, why are the Celtics choosing him as their next head coach? I don't understand why Joe Missoula getting arrested for underage drinking 14 years ago is relevant at all whatsoever. I don't understand why Joe Missoula getting into aggravated assault and domestic disputes at bars is anyone's business either 14 years ago. I don't get it. And you know what bothers me? Joe Missoula 
Lola, of course, the way he's able to get into this situation is unfortunate. I mean, you never want to succeed as a result of someone's downfall, unless if you're Malika Andrews. So I understand feeling very sensitive about people talking about women in this situation. I don't agree with it. I think it should have been handled differently, but why try to sabotage this young man's opportunity? I mean, what's the purpose in that? What are you trying to achieve here? All you are achieving here is ruining a young man's chance at one of the most exclusive and prestigious jobs in all of sports. Now, this is before we even get to the fact that Malika Andrews is in a consensual relationship with one of her colleagues, Dave McMenamin. Man, things are getting really freaking ironic here. Here's my take on everything, man. I think there's a lot of reasons we could be sensitive. I mean, in my last video, a lot of you guys looked at me and the fact that I have a shaven head and were shocked at the fact that my head was shaven and I was appearing on camera and you're like, what the hell is going on with Mike? And there have been some personal health struggles that I've been trying to overcome myself. I don't come on this show and start crying to you guys about it. I understand some people are more sensitive than others, but I really don't don't believe that's the way things get done here. I've been going through a very difficult time. I have my own means of handling it. I'm dealing with it in my own way and I'm gonna be okay. But in this situation, man, the way Malika's handling this, being upset at the world for whatever injustices are inflicted upon women and using her platform to really twist the situation, I can't say I'm a fan of it, especially when she's trying to sabotage a head coach's opportunity here. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think? There may have been some stuff in this video that you guys don't agree with and that's okay aside from that i'm your boy mike and i'm dropping our mic until our next upload